Oh, I want to talk about my Couch to Barbell Level 1 program. Well, Couch to Barbell program, this is Level 1. It is starting from scratch. From the couch, you don't exercise. This is what I would start you off with. Uh, the description is going to be on the thingy under the, the thing, but basically, uh, I want you doing, starting with just one set of each exercise, 5 to 15 reps, not a lot of work, and then taking a walk. Same day or days in between, doesn't really matter. You can do this every day with a little walk, or you can do it one day this, and then the other day a walk, it works. When you're walking, though, I want you to walk with a closed mouth, tongue in the roof of your mouth, being in and out your nose. Practice that. Practice walking tall. Practice walking pretty. Practice walking and breathing at the same time. Now, you want to talk to your friend while you're walking, that's fine, that's cool too, but as long as you're done talking, you know the nose. Now, for the actual exercises, five exercises done in a circuit. Again, start with one set of each for the first week or so, then progress to two, then maybe three. When three sets of 15 is easy, move on to level two, okay? So, here's how it goes. First movement is the rotational dead bug. I have to get really far away so you guys can see this. Uh, but basically, it looks like this. I am gonna move, well, my lower back's gonna be flat, my feet are gonna be pointing, my toes are nice and spread, and I'm gonna move through my hip socket, my shoulder socket, and my neck. It's gonna look like this. I'm gonna turn my knee in, moving through my hip socket, and at the same time, I'm gonna turn the opposite shoulder towards the ground. Really, all you can see is my palm turning towards the ground, my elbow kind of spinning as well. The movement is happening inside the shoulder socket. And then I'm gonna switch and do the other side. That's one rep. Actually, kind of how you want. You know, doesn't really matter if it's one, one, or you know, one, two, three. But the point is, we're switching off, right? What shoulder we're internally rotating and what hip we're internally rotating. Opposite sides, turning the head away from the shoulder. Keeping everything else in place. Low back stays flat. Hips don't turn with the, with the knee, right? Only the hip socket moves. Shoulders don't turn. Only the hip socket moves. So there's a difference between this and this, right? Second exercise, a bridge. Same position, kind of convenient. Movement happens in the hip again, at the shoulders again, and at the neck again. But now it's front and back. So I'm gonna extend through the hips. My nice, my toes are nice and wide. I have weight on my toes and on my heels. I'm gonna extend through the shoulders by pushing down to the ground. I'm gonna keep my neck nice and tucked. So it's going into flexion as I do so. And here's the key to this movement. The relationship between these two bones and the ribs has to stay similar, right? The angle has to stay similar as I come down again and I go up again. And that's teaching me my brain, my spine, to coordinate itself while I move through my hips and my shoulders, which is going to come in really handy when we lift heavy-ish barbells in the future. Again, couch to barbell. Now, not up quite yet. Remember, before we lift, we need to stand, right? So these are all part of the standing process. Now we're going to do the quadruped walk or the push plank. Depending how far forward you go, I call it different names. The point is, I am sitting back on my heels, my toes are together, my knees are wide, my hands are stretched out far, my head and my hips are going to move as one going forward. I'm going to push constantly on the floor as I do so. Push the floor constantly away. I'm going to go forward as far as I can without hitting my head on the wall or hurting my wrist. Now, one thing that's going to help you not hurt your wrist is turning that elbow towards your hips. That's going to engage this big muscle back here, and it's going to help you put the shoulder and the wrist in a better position to go into that uh, wrist extension and shoulder extension as you're going forward. Now, my hips are extended, my abs are tight, my glutes are tight as I go forward, and then when I come back, again, I try to keep my hips and my head moving as one. So everything in between is a nice straightish neutral position, right? 
fourth exercise is going to be the anterior reach or the hip hinge with anterior reach. Or anterior means forward, right? That's about it. So I'm going to stand on my feet. My toes are spread. My weight's evenly distributed between, distributed between my toes and my heels. Uh, evenly distributed between the inside of my toes, big toe, and the pinky toe, right? Outside. And then I'm going to reach forward. Moving my head and the hips together at the same time again, reaching forward to get some length and actually get, and get some extra shoulder movement. And stand up. Now there's movement on my knees. The chairs are there to kind of remind me not to make this a squat, right? If I start squatting it, I'm gonna hit my, my chins against the chair. So I'm gonna try to avoid that, right? By bending my knees, as much as I need to really, but not allowing them to travel forward much. I only bend my knees as much as I need to, to keep weight on my toes. Now, because my head is so far forward, I don't need to keep a lot of weight on my toes, especially when you have a big head like mine. But if you have a smaller head and a longer torso and shorter legs in relation to your torso, it might look squatty. You might look more like this. That's fine. That's fine. Do it how you can, right? Forward and back. I like to breathe in once I reach and breathe out as I come up. There's, there's options to that, but for now, let's get to that breathing pattern. Now, the last movement we're gonna include in this uh, series, right, this, in this level one, is the assisted squat. And we're gonna assist it with the barbell. If you haven't found a barbell on Craigslist or in basement or garage yet, uh, please buy the cheapest one you can find. Uh, Use a broomstick for this one for now. You're gonna use it as a cane, basically. You're gonna push down into it. Again, activate this, these big fat muscles that, down here. And, uh, and you're gonna keep the weight evenly distributed on your toes, right? Inside and outside, like I said, pinky big toe side, toes and heel. Now, as you sit back and down, down is very important. It's not just back, it's back and down. The other one was just back. This one's back and down. Your knees are gonna bend at the same time as your hips go back. And you're gonna keep tension on this the whole time and keep, again, the movement of the head and the hips synch synchronous. Is that word, synchronous, right? It happens at the same time. So my head goes forward as my hips go back. My hip head goes back as my hips go forward. The assistance is helping you gain stability through contractions and your big muscles of your lats and your abdominals, abdominals, abdominals. And uh, so it just helps you squat deeper, right? Notice, this is kind of shallow for me. Start shallow. Don't ever do it. But as you get better at it, you know, find a smaller chair. You might not have a taller chair at your home, but you know, find something. And again, feet straight. There's reasons to toe your feet out in squats, but this, these are just practice squats. So let's go as deep as we can with feet straight, right? That's what we're trying to learn how to do. So go down and up. And even when I'm in that deep position, I'm thinking about putting weight on this pole. I'm pressing down to help with stability. That is your assisted squat. Those five movements are all we're starting with. I recommend at least every other day. It's better to do one set a day of each than three sets once a week or twice a week, right? Two to three sets every day is perfect, probably. Uh, give it a few weeks. Once three sets of 15 is easy, move on to level two. Uh, and then this type of stuff will become your warm-up. Actually, level two is, will become your warm-up for further movements, right? We're gonna progress in scale and in load, right? We're gonna actually use this to load the body in the future. Uh, that's it. I think that's it, couch to level one. No, couch to barbell level one. That's the video.